bracelets for MIAs and ask individuals to, to wear that bracelet. This lady uh, had the bracelet for a Colonel David Zook. And if they're MIA, they're listed on the wall, but they're listed on the wall with a, an open colored, uh, an open box. And once they're identified, then the box will be uh, colored in. So she had the bracelet. She went and found uh, David Zook's name on the wall. Uh, we saw a lot of family members would come out and leave flowers. Um, her mother came out and left a poem and a picture of her son that was, that was there. Uh, just it, was really a, it was a very touching thing. I, as I stood there one day, I could see, I could see the tears that would flood uh, several different times. And we were told to expect that, but you didn't really know what you were going to get. Uh, there was a fellow that, that came every day, sat out in front of the wall uh, in a chair for about an hour or so, and on Friday they told him that this was the last day the wall was going to be here, and that day he actually went up to the wall for the first time. The other days he sat, only sat in a chair. Well, sat what's his story? Do you know what it was? No, ma'am. Uh, I don't know as anyone ever talked to him. Uh, we had some folks come up in the middle of the night to visit it. We had Someone was out there day and night. Yes, ma'am. Of course, we had the volunteers during, yes. during the day. And then at night, the uh, Kennedy, Kennedy Police Department had someone sit out there. Oh, okay. All right. It was open for visitation, and folks could visit it, but just so there'd be no mischief. So there'd be place. no damage right. to it, no vandalism. And everything right. that was left was packaged up and sent to Washington, D.C. to be kept with, with the artifacts and memorabilia that is left at the wall there as well. Okay. Good. Good. This one, again, a photo from, from, um, from the wall. But the story that day is probably the plane crash. Uh, the individuals from, from uh, Falcon Communications in Malden, which was really a really devastating blow to the community. And the pilot was Alan England, who many people know from, mm -hmm. from Kennington mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. very well respected. And another, you had a, a veteran bikes two days to see the moving wall. Right. So we did have, uh, and he looks like he's brought all his uh, life's Belonging. He was, he was, had a lot on that bicycle. Yes, he did. <laughs> Here it looks like we're getting ready for the, uh, the Harold Simmons tournament, the uh, golf did, tournament. Did you play? I actually got to play this year. I haven't got to play every year, but I had to get to play this year. Uh, they wouldn't let you play before, or are you just... Uh, well, sometimes I've been busy. Oh, <laughs> Okay. I, I, have, I have played, but, but been a few years when I've just been busy and right. I had a chance to. And was there a, a, a big crowd this year? Did it uh, yes, draw uh, as many people as usual? It, pretty much. I think we're looking somewhere around 150,000 is what they raised. Oh, okay. Uh, had some, some different attractions this year uh, in terms of celebrities that visited with us. Uh, one of my personal favorites, and, and I got to play with him, was a named Tom Matty, uh, old football player. Uh, with the Baltimore Colts, and I grew up following the Baltimore Colts, so he and I, we had a, we had a good visit. It was oh, fun. Oh, good. Oh. It was fun. And that's the J.C. Barbecue Cook-Off. Those guys do a good job. It's a lot of work to make that thing fly. Yes, it, yes it is, and they do a great job. And I know you've been out there yes. to see them as well. Yes. And, and this is, this is, uh, the winner here gets an entry into the World Championship in Memphis, which, which has even more significance to mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Okay. 9-11 was one of those days when you're going to look back and you always remember where you were and what you were doing. Uh, and I can remember sitting at my desk and heard someone out here say uh, uh, a plane hit the Trade Center. It was about 9 o'clock, a few minutes after. And the first one that hit, what did you think? There was an accident. Yes. Someone would veer yes, off. Yes, I too. Yes. And and I I buzzed uh, Sylvia Shamshore, the editor, and I said, "Did you get that?" And she said, "Yes, I've got it." And then within a few minutes, and, you know, we we know where it went from there. Uh, this is what our front page looked like uh, the day after. And terror has local effect, and I remember being with a group of students in a foreign country. And for that week, they they would every time they were out of class would 
would sit in front of the television and see what was going on there. Sure. Hey, incidentally, I've got a granddaughter playing tennis. How about that? The, on the front page of this. Not what just is? playing tennis, mm -hmm. but she went all the way to state, didn't right. she? Right. She, she did. She did. She She's did. Quite, yeah, it. takes after her daddy. <laughs> didn't, it, didn't her daddy play tennis? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Did he yeah. stay too? Yeah. No, uh, no, 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 okay. no. But he played. He played. That's good. Now her mother won't like it that you said she took after her daddy. But that's all right. I'm a tennis player. Let me okay. get out of. Let me get out of the doghouse here. <laughs> all right. Okay. That was a historic time and will be. Will be a watershed time. Sure, for us, I think. sure will. This was, this was the following day. And, and, and you have a lot of flags still flying. We do. Uh, and I think that's a good thing. Oh, I do, too. That's yes. a good thing. And you listed this sorting through the aftermath. Right. And, and one thing that, that, that this did, in, not just in Kennett, but, but uh, nationally, was we really pride ourselves on local news on the front page. But the attacks and the war on terrorism Changed a little bit. We started putting more national, and, and in the case of Afghanistan, I guess you would say even international news on the front page, uh, because it was it was what folks wanted to read and know about. Uh, as I said, I've been gone and have not kept up with all of the papers. But are any local people in in Afghanistan from here, to your knowledge? I don't know. There is uh, uh, from Zenith, David Harris's. Uh, son Clint is a pilot. Uh, I won't say he's a Marine Corps pilot. Yeah, Marine Corps uh, Top Gun, who's on one of the carriers out there in the Gulf. I don't know if he's oh, still okay. there, if he's come home. Okay. But he was flying missions into Afghanistan. I see. Okay. All right. What's road closed? And well, we jumped ahead here to to uh, toward the end of the year, and we're closing the year a little bit on a sad note with the uh, the body of the young man found down south of town. Uh, Went for several days. No one, no one knew who he was. Uh, wasn't. Uh, and all sorts of rumors. Oh sure. I, I've sure. never heard so many different things. Uh, that's that's. If there's a downside living in a small town, I guess that's it. But, but, uh, yeah. And unfortunately, we did. Uh, the place where we find he's from Blyville, and and uh, it looks like the uh, the uh, the lady that killed him is also from Blyville, and they just chose to dump him here, and maybe to try to get out of. of uh, uh, away from seeing the crime. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I said we're closing on bad news. We're actually, uh, on bad note, we're actually not. Great West, formerly known as Gen Am Benefits, is expanding their facility here. Have you been out to talk to Freddie Green? No, I have not. As I said, we have okay. not been back very long. And now, where are they going? Where is this construction going? South Bypass. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, toward the, the west end there, uh, the west end of the South Bypass. Okay. And you can see they're already unloading the steel. Uh, hey, the we are going to have to. We're going to have to take our camera out and film this from the beginning. Will it be quite a, a large facility? Freddie has told us. I don't know if I'm wrong. I want to say about twenty-five thousand square feet. Uh, twenty thousand square feet. The neat thing is that when they came in, um, as part of General American Insurance. And this is the claims processing center. Yes. Moved it out of St. Louis, moved it here, looking and hiring about 40 to 50 people. By the time Freddie gets her building built and gets its staff, she's going to be up about 150 people, I think. But I'll let her tell you all about that. I will do it. And she's the real reason that happened, because she worked for the local uh, employment office and made the presentation to them along with a couple other folks when they came in to interview us. The first person they hired was Freddie Graham. And, uh, She's made it fly. That's right. She's enthusiastic. She was, was enthusiastic about it from the very sure. beginning. Sure. She's great. Sure. She's great. Here we have some census information that talks about the state of Missouri, you know, which uh, is us as well. And you can see there we are, Duncan County. In particular, this story shows, or this graph shows, uh, the growing uh, Hispanic population in the county. Duncan County is the ninth largest in terms of percentage growth. Uh, of counties in, in Missouri. Uh, there are, in the 2000 census, looks like 824 uh, Hispanic individuals in the county. Again, it doesn't sound like a lot until you look back to what it was 10 years before, and we've grown almost 400%. Mm -hmm. That's now, are these resident 
are these year-round people here, or are they some of this, is it uh, transient labor? My understanding, these are, these are permanent. These are permanent, these are permanent. okay. Uh, these are well, residents. The census lists them here, I guess this is and it. And St. Cecilia's Catholic Church uh, has a, a, uh, a ministry unique to the Hispanic community, and uh, uh, even at the point I think they're maybe looking at a Boy Scout program mm -hmm. uh, for uh, our Cub Scout program for, for, for the young people, uh, yes. Young boys, yes. Well, all right, so um, is, that, is that what you've, is that it? Have you, do There's you have something else to look at? All right. Just what are those you have? These are fabulous sections. Okay, but this, uh, is this what you had in Sundays, this? No, uh, that's what we did last March. Oh, 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 yes, yes. oh, oh yes. Well, you've gone through a lot of newspapers today. You've seen the top events that uh, uh, Bud Hunt has uh, brought out for us to look at. And uh, he, from the beginning of January to, we went through December 28th, and you've seen all the headlines and the top events. And Bud, thank you for letting us come in and spread everything out here and, and let us hear the news. My pleasure. I always enjoy visiting with you. Well, thank you very much. You have been watching Time for Talk. Time for Talk is a community betterment service designed to cooperate with our local community betterment program. Each evening, Monday through Friday at this time, Rosemary interviews local personalities and others who bring items of interest to this community.